Hey, you're at Steve Tech. I'm Steve, and on this series, we're going to start talking about. We're still doing our, our valve train series, so we have all the stuff from previously. And so today, we're talking about rocker arms, rocker arm stands, uh, and valve train rocker arm geometry. So, uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to start going over the different types of valve train uh, styles with mounting and then uh, rocker arms and stuff. So this will be part one of three parts. All right. Now this is your typical classic stud mount system. Uh, this is a, happens to be a small block forward head. Happens to be one that we just had here because uh, I don't have very many of these any longer. But this is stud mount. This is typical Chevrolet. Everything except uh, Chrysler's would have had uh, stud mount rocker arms. Uh, a couple other. Uh, ones might not have but might have had some type of shaft but typically everything has some kind of stud mount rocker arm. Now problem with the stud mount is that this rocker arm is sitting here on this pedestal you can see here um, this rocker arm stud as the valve opens up under pressure has a real tendency for this stud to go whoop 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 back and forth because of the spring pressure. So just like uh, any type of piece of steel or this bolt in particular that's sticking up uh, when this puts a bunch of pressure right here on the rocker, it forces this rocker arm st uh, stud to go backwards a little bit and then just kind of gets in this little oscillation. So what you typically would see is that the people would then put a stud girdle on. Now I don't happen to have any kind of stud girdle. This particular uh, rocker arm and valve train system is a hydraulic roller. Now hydraulic rollers and stud mounts really isn't that big a deal. Usually pretty good but you get big roller stuff, big uh, solid roller and a lot of horsepower with a lot of cylinder pressure. Um, these studs become a problem. You can just kind of see they're like all in line there but I mean these things will just just move all over the place. And if they move too far, obviously they could take the push rod, uh, I'm sorry, they could take the rocker arm uh, tip and could actually come off of the valve very bad. So anyways, the next thing that you would see is that they would put a stud girdle on it. And what it would be, are these are the locks to adjust to this rocker arm. So this, this rocker arm style, it just adjusts basically by what push rod you have in it. Since this pivot point, the shaft mount, if it would be a shaft mount, this shaft is not, uh, it, it is floating. So this pivot continues to move up and down. So this geometry is set by the push rod length. So this is a poly lock, and this locks that, or locks that rocker arm into place. Now we'll talk about the different styles of rocker arms here in the next episode, but this would be uh, the pilot lock. And what they'll do is they'll make this longer, this whole nut longer, and they'll build a aluminum or steel, whatever, complete plate that goes along and captures every single one of these. Now that would be a stud girdle. So that stud girdle then clamps on and holds on to each one of these longer studs. The rocker arm is still below. The rocker arm is still there. It just has this really long stud and it has this plate that just goes along and captures all of these. And then it basically ties them all together and keeps them from moving back and forth as much. A little more complicated in Big Block Chevrolet because they're canted, two different valve angles, so uh, putting them on is kind of tricky. But in a small block Ford, small block Chevrolet, they're really easy. They do add, they do make it better, uh, not as good as a shaft mount. So this is your typical. Uh, stud mount system, what you would have for a girdle if you wanted to do it. These things work well, no problem in most hydraulics. And as you can see, and we'll talk about later, how this adjusts the geometry based on that shaft height. Now it's something a little interesting because we'll show this later, but as you can see, now watch that roller tip. Now, I'm not opening the valve or closing the valve. We're not doing anything. All we're doing is changing our pivot height. Do you see how that moves the roller tip on the valve and gets it into a different spot? So, anyways, this is your basic system. Good for hydraulic roller stuff. 
uh, not real super high power stuff and obviously we'll start going over some more uh, some better systems and we'll also go over this LS system which is a slightly different one all right now the next system we're gonna look at is a bolted down LS style system and how it goes on to a, uh, a mounting plate so this is kind of a combination of a shaft mount slash pedestal mount slash uh, modified uh, uh, rock arm stud kind of like that so what's a little bit better about this is it is all fixtured on this one plate so we can take this whole rock arm assembly put it on and then individually each rock arm would go on now here this pivot never changes so if the valve was in here this pivot doesn't change you have to have the correct length push rod in order to get the correct geometry to get the correct motion because that pivot isn't working on this style there's you could you could end up uh, having the wrong length push rod not having the proper geometry and it still lives and still works doesn't work as well could be better but it still works here uh, you got a valve that's a set height uh, the rocker arm is a set height you need to have a proper length push rod period in order to load it but why this is a little bit better than your typical stud mount is that this stand and rocker arm system all bolts down so it bolts down it's clamping together and has a lot less tendency it's not sitting on a post out here going like this you know your post are out like that now when you bolt this down bolts down into it very hard for this thing to move so it's much more rigid but it does change your style of uh, adjustment more like a shaft mount so these are a relatively good system and I'm always surprised at how good uh, these actual stock rocker arms are and how well they how much horsepower they hold still would like to have that roller tip we'll talk about that later in the other video but this is that second style of mounting where uh, rocker arm bolts down to a with a single bolt to a stand and this is a one piece stand per se but this doesn't really do anything except locate this just keeps the rocker arm from turning sideways. So that shape right there, that convex shape, keeps this thing from rocking. You tighten this down, that rocker arm cannot twist, so it stays in alignment the whole time. Here, you have to have a guide plate in order to keep the push rod actually keeps the rocker arm from going side to side. So there's a lot of problems that are involved with a, a stud mount, and this alleviates a lot of those problems. But, uh, this is still just one bolt holding this rocker arm down. Uh, there's no real strength outside of what's in that one bolt. All right, so now let me grab the next style. All right, now this is our next style. And this is actually my SMX head. SMX. Anyways, this is one of the bare heads. It's all apart. but. This is something that we spent a lot of time also working on valve train and geometry because we have some stuff moved in here, a lot of stuff. But this is a one piece stand style. Now, there are some rocker arms that have, like Jessel has a sportsman kit where they have a good rocker arm, not, not like this, this is a different deal, but they have a, a shaft mount rocker arm that bolts to individual pedestals. And then that pedestal would bolt right here, have one bolt that goes through it, but the rocker arm is still a good shaft mount rocker arm, has two bolts holding the, uh, two bolts holding the rocker arm shaft right here. So it would be similar to this. It would have these two bolts going through it, holding the rocker arm shaft and rocker arm down to a single pedestal. So imagine if this thing was just kind of cut off right here, just round, because I don't think I happen to have one here right now but it would just have this one pedestal and there would be a single bolt going through here. It's still better, it's still good, it's bolted down, the rocker arm becomes more rigid, but that would be called an individual stand style. So, uh, like I said, 
Uh, let me go show you uh, one of the big block Chevrolets because I do think I have something here. All right, I did find something. Now this is your typical Jessel sportsman style uh, rocker arm kit. And what it'll have is it'll have eight individual stands just like this. Now it doesn't obviously bolt onto to this head, but uh, you would have a stand right here for each individual rocker arm. So it would like go in place of this stud right there and each one would have individual on like a big block Chevrolet and then the rocker arm fits down and bolts into the stand okay now this is still a better system it is still better one bigger bolt 7 16 bolt so the the stand is pretty tight pretty good the, the rocker arm is pretty nice and uh, goes in and it's pretty pretty secure not bad but what you'll find is that when you have these individual stands like this that they still have a tendency to pull the rocker arm they'll actually pull the stud or this bolt right out of the cylinder head right up and this thing will be sitting in your valve cover not attached to your cylinder head anymore it'll leave these bolts in place the rocker arm shaft bolts will still be there right here but it'll actually pull this bolt thread right out of the cylinder head hmm. so what the next one would be is a pro series rocker arm where they have the intake stand is all one piece like it would be on a small block Chevrolet and then they have the exhaust stands individual problem is and is that the exhaust still has a tendency to go pop and pick that thing right up and shear the bolt. The intakes got all rigid because they're all on one, so they shear the load all the way across all eight of all four of them, I mean. So what we always do is we will take these stands, if we have a Pro Series rocker arm kit, we'll take the individual stands and weld them to the one piece stand behind to make these more rigid. And that solves a lot of problems. So that's a Pro Series style rocker arm stand with a one piece intake but individual exhaust all right so let's go back over here to the best way of doing it with a one piece stand where the intakes the exhaust everything is all tied together now as you can see here we'll put this on now this whole rock arm stand assembly is held on by 14 7 16 studs just to hold the stand down we have all this rigidity in the stand everything goes all through here this is the ultimate way in my opinion of doing it okay this is maximum rigidity and like I said 14 7 16 basically head studs holding just the rocker arm stand down flat and secure to the cylinder head so that you can then take this rocker arm and bolt it to the stand and have this be a nice, very good, very secure valve train system that doesn't deflect, that doesn't allow movement like the stud mount would, even like this uh, uh, LS style pedestal mount, or even like the individual stands that will have a tendency to have so much load on them, they actually pull the threads right out of the cylinder head and lift these rocker arm stands up. All right, so there's a lot of involved in this whole deal with uh, making sure that this one piece stand, so whatever cylinder head you have, if they have availability of a one piece stand, or at minimum, one piece intake stand and we weld machine the exhaust stand to it, that is a far superior way of mounting the rocker arms. Doesn't matter how good your rocker arm is, just like this, this this rocker arm, I've never have, have I ever broken these bolts that hold the rocker arm down. I've never broken these bolts or had any problem on this kind of stand. This little stand will always pull the threads right out of the cylinder head and pop this thing right off. That's how much load that has on it. So <clears throat> once this is connected, to something behind it or like this is connected to everything makes it much more rigid much more secure so definitely the ultimate way of doing this uh, now I'm going to show you something that even is more elaborate in this uh, big hemi project that we have going on here all right now this is 
uh, a 49 Hemi program that we're working on right now. And this entire rocker arm stand is really elaborate. Kind of show you around it of how it, it's the same thing. The rocker arms, it's all one piece, all one piece. Rocker arms bolt directly down to the, uh, the stand below. It's made out of aluminum. It's nice uh, rocker arms. Now there, I do talk about this just a little bit later uh, with problems with Hemi's and how long, see how long that rocker arm is on the exhaust. Nothing you're gonna do about it. It has to be that long. Even the intakes are long on this. Typically they'll be a little bit shorter, but uh, in a 4.9 they're not. But the pro one problem that you would have uh, that I don't like about this type of stand is, and there's not much you can do about it. There are inherent problems with uh, Hemi valve train. And the one problem is rocker arms. But uh, this, lots of bolts right on the outside here. You see nothing down here. See my fingers wiggling, see all that air underneath it there's nothing you're going to do about it because you got to put you got push rods coming up through there you got a spark plug hole that's going down through the center i mean there's a spark plug hole there's a lot going on in this cylinder head that dictates that you really can't make it much better than this i mean uh without a serious redesign and something to come up and br grab this bridge right here but uh you know this is not supported real well right in this area right here on this pivot basically long story short put studs as close to the rocker arm as possible and as many studs as possible as you can to get rigidity and strength otherwise this would have a tendency to probably flex a little bit it's not suspended it's not bolted down by anything it's bolted down out here and then it's bolted down right over here but there's nothing here in the middle and there's a lot of load because these two rock arms are right here. So pretty elaborate, still works good, uh, but still always would have typical uh, Hemi problems. And uh, one of them is they just uh, the rock arm stands are a little bit problematic, uh, especially in something like this. But anyways, that is the ins and outs of what you need to have as your foundation. You can have the best rock arm in the world, don't matter. If you don't have it on the right stand, the best stand, Bolt it down as much as possible, as many bolts as possible, welded together, one piece stands, steel if possible, uh, to make that as rigid and, and as good as possible because all it'll do is just knock your, your perfect rocker arm will just end up over there in your valve cover all by itself because it didn't have a good enough stand. So anyways, uh, that's part one of here and now we'll start talking about the rocker arms.